Hi folks, Russ Scala here. We're gonna talk about zero gravity, what happens to our metabolism, and the space race to Mars. Let me give you a little history. Why I always been excited about the space race, even back uh, during the 1960s when the book The Right Stuff was written, always fascinated me. Back when I was a paramedic, that paramedic training in our equipment was developed based on the NASA program of monitoring the astronauts' heart rates. That was fascinating. So from the NASA program, as we measured the astronauts' heart rates and the war in Vietnam where they were doing advanced IV solutions for gunshot wounds, that came together and helped create our paramedic system, which I was one of the first paramedics to hit the streets. That space race caused a lot of innovation at the time. Now today, in 2019, Elon Musk, Blue Origins, NASA, there's a space race to go to Mars. It's gonna take a year to get to Mars, six to eight months, and six to eight months to get back. What are we gonna do about muscle wasting, about bone loss, about problems with the heart? How are we gonna look at the metabolism in a zero gravity environment and put a shield up so the astronauts can travel safely? This is what I'm gonna dive into today, and this is the research that I'm gonna open source. I believe if I take a break from traditional medicine and not compartmentalize this training or this education to monetize it, if I open source this training to people like Elon Musk, Blue Origin, NASA, I think it'll help us get the space faster and safer and who knows what innovations will come forward. When I read Scott Kelly's book, the first astronaut to spend a year in space, he had his twin brother that stayed on the ground and they did advanced testing on Scott. When I read the book, I started making connections and, and I was looking at uh, the metabolic problems that, you know, that he was having. When he got home, two days after he got home, the book starts out on how difficult it was for him to walk from the dinner table to the bathroom. He was in a pro-inflammatory response. He was having muscle wasting and bone loss. It even affected his heart. And he, he, made, he made, the, uh, 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 made the statement in, in his book about medicine doesn't even uh, know how to treat uh, zero gravity illnesses right now. But as I started reading his book and looking at what his diet was and what the testing uh, he was doing and the basic feelings he had when he arrived home, I think that we could do better. Folks, I've always been fascinated with the metabolism ever since I was a kid. I, I started working in the emergency room when I was still in high school. I'm, I'm always drilling down on what we can do better. So what I wanna educate you today is a little bit of my history. I had to work, uh, I was a director of research for a large pharmacy in 2005. I was put on a team that was developing a long-acting growth hormone. We've had AIDS patients and, and elderly patients and people in a mus muscle-wasting state that was in, in, uh, in a hospital and, and being bedridden for a long time. Even cancer patients uh, with chemotherapy was causing muscle wasting. Now folks, understand that our muscles are a reservoir for vitamins, minerals, and amino acids. And the more muscle you maintain, the healthier you're gonna be bar none, that's just biology. Now fast forward to what we're gonna to do today about the astronauts gleaning from what Scott Kelly did being the first human to spend a year in space. That year in space that Scott spent did a lot of damage. It actually accelerated the aging process. So with my history of working with endurance athletes, AIDS patients, taking people into nursing homes and watching them deteriorate, and then fast forward, I was working in anti-aging centers where 60 and 70 year old people from Boca Raton to Beverly Hills were getting high dose hormonal replacement therapy. They were using growth hormone at a dose that was maintaining their muscle mass. So this is what's been in my head when I read Scott Kelly's book and when I started doing research on uh, the metabolism of z zero gravity about five years ago. So I'm gonna walk you through this basic chart here to look at the areas that can maintain muscle wasting and slow the aging process of our astronauts, especially if they're gonna make that trip to Mars and back, okay? So we know that the, the brain is connected to the intestinal tract. You are not what you eat, you are what you absorb. If, you're in, if you're, the intestinal tract, if the floor is not in a proper balance, you're not gonna pull nutrients out of food, okay? So, and, and that's gonna make the astronauts take nutrients out of their own muscle tissue, which Scott Kelly experienced and every other astronaut on the space station, they experience uh, decreased function of their heart, ejection fraction, they, 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 they lost muscle mass in their legs and bone density, and they also carried an extreme amount of fluid. Our bodies were not designed for zero gravity, obviously, but if we look at these multiple metabolic systems currently that aren't being checked by NASA, SpaceX, or Blue Origins, I think if we open source this, we could do some really unique early, uh, early adapting uh, processes moving forward. So we know that once you're in space, when you look back at Earth, 
and you're in a capsule, that is a completely different environment. Your neurotransmitters can become out of balance, and, and, and that's your brain chemistry that we could check with the urine sample. So a lot of these astronauts that are in this accelerated aging environment, and they're looking out the window, looking back at Earth, that overwhelming feeling could cause imbalances that can lead them to eat more carbohydrates, for instance. Since fluid is a very, very big problem in space, I believe that the current diet that they're on of three meals a day and two snacks can actually exacerbate the symptoms of the aging process in space, and, and we, we could get into that in another video. Right now, I'm trying to paint a picture of what my pharmacy can do, okay, what my physicians can do, and what my research lab could do so we could fast forward this process. So folks, what we wanna do is compare and contrast what's going on with NASA, what's going on with the latest research on uh, zero gravity metabolic disturbances. And I want to show you what, what we can do right now, and we could, we could do a turnkey solution pretty quickly with this and share this information. We know that IGF-1 is impacted by growth hormone, and we know that if you're in space for over a year, this is all blue water, blue water territory. We really don't know what goes on uh, after a year in space. Scott Kelly, the astronaut, spent six months in space, and we saw the damage that it caused after six months, but now a year, there's a whole nother set of symptoms that are raising their e evil head. And how are we gonna help the men and women that are gonna make this trip to Mars? And, and, and here's my hypothesis so far. If we look at multiple metabolic systems of the body, if we measure mitochondrial dysfunction pre-flight, if we measure growth hormone, all the anabolics, testosterone and cortisol, if we look at the intestinal tract, which is now considered the second brain, if we could test this before the journey to Mars, if we could maintain their med levels in their diet during their trip to Mars, and then when they get back, retest them and re-ramp up all the metabolic systems that were compromised. Our goal with this, folks, this new research, is we wanna focus on two areas, cognition and brain chemistry, and we wanna focus on muscle wasting, bone loss, and damage to the heart. Doing this advanced testing, folks, in the Mars journey is gonna take eight months there and eight months back, we want to maintain the metabolic system of these men and women astronauts so they could arrive home safely.